All right, guys, welcome to the Johnstone Cafferty Group. Quick review on connecting the Bluetooth service checker. Uh, we're not going to go deep into the diagnostic, but we will show connection. And on this uh, Zoom style training here, we will show a little bit of the lab and we'll show the RX09A with the FTX09A that we normally connect to. And we'll show the screen there uh, that we normally use in the classroom. Although we're going to do some screenshots and go to the slides, even though it's a video, uh, so you can get a clear picture. Keep in mind, we're on a mini split here, but we also have the multi split. Uh, and we can also connect it to the Sky Air and the VRV and uh, the VRV heads on the end door connected to just that single piece of equipment. So if you daisy change some uh, outdoor units, uh, we're only going to see the heads in the unit you're connected to, uh, not the rest of the equipment like you would with a full service checker. Uh, this also will work on the uh, standard uh, residential split inverters. So the 17s, uh, the 18V, the uh, 20, and the Amana, and the uh, Goodman uh, inverters as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and get right to it. All right, just a quick shot of the lab here. Uh, you'll see the RX09A there. Uh, we're going to plug into that model. You can see it hanging out of the side there. We'll take the lid off and we'll see it is plugged in. But I really wanted to show you is... Uh, you have no blinking lights, no batteries, so the unit will have to be powered up in order to get calm. And when we see we power the unit up here, I'll skip some frames here so we can get right to the light. And uh, you'll see it is powered up at this time. All right, we're going to use screenshots, but I just wanted to show you on the phone here. I'll go to the actual app uh, that I've downloaded, and hopefully you've got it downloaded, the Daikin Air Conditioning Monitoring Tool. And we'll open it up and we'll see the opening screen. And we'll go ahead and we'll switch over to the uh, screenshots. All right, and hopefully you have had a chance to download it. Uh, this is the uh, app we'll be using uh, from the Play Store. And we'll jump right into the opening screen. We'll see the screen here. And we'll go down to the settings button if it's the first time use. And we'll have to go into the settings and we'll have to set the uh, service office and a responsible person. Uh, as well as going into the unit of measure and setting the unit measure up properly. And when we're done with that, we'll go ahead and uh, hit the green button, go back to the main screen. And to get started here, we'll just go right into the record mode or the start mode. We'll hit the red button there. All right, hopefully you've had a chance to go ahead and pair this up in your Bluetooth settings uh, before going into here. But after it's paired up, we'll see it under our paired devices. If we can click on it right there, it's a list of all the devices. And that's the one we have paired. Uh, it must be paired again. And if it did ask for a code, 3131. Once it comes up, we'll go ahead and record only button. In the future, you can also pick a customer or set up a customer and go into that number. But for now, we'll use the record only. So notice it uses that as a customer. And the map will be the year, the month, date, hour, minute, and second. Um, we'll go ahead and click the chain for the link, uh, the link to our unit. And you'll see it tries to detect a Bluetooth uh, service checker. And if you do get a connection fail, uh, it happens on a Spend a little extra time on this slide. If it, if it doesn't connect, uh, try again. Try three times if it still won't connect. I've disconnected it from my Bluetooth, unpaired it, and repaired it using the code 3131 to get it to connect. Again, when you do connect, this is what you're going to see on the screen. You'll see your protocol, and you'll see indoor units. In this case, there's one. And I'm going to go get to the proper data label, uh, and that's so it knows which sensor is doing what. Uh, in this case, we're going to uh, choose the unselected, and we're just going to see two items, a mini or a multi. And if you're doing different models, uh, you're going to you want to carefully look at your list and make sure you get the unit closest to the one you're working on so those data labels are correct. Otherwise, it may put the uh, suction pressure with the head pressure and temperature, etc. Uh, we'll go ahead, and when we do open it up, this is what we're going to see. A few items to note, if we do record, it's going to be that bottom red button there for record. And we'll also have the clock up top, which is showing us a record, and the record button will light up as we see coming up here. Any errors with the system will appear in the top right. Uh, protection modes also will appear. Uh, again, a protection mode is not an error. If you've done the classes, you know a protection mode is just going to limit the frequency of a compressor for various reasons. Uh, and then we'll see these four items right here. These are the four items that are going to limit the frequency of the compressor and cause a protection mode. Again, that's not an error. It's designed to do that. 
So for example, if our coil on the indoor unit got down to 39 degrees, it'll go into protection mode, slowing the compressor down and showing you protection modes on. You still have at least 13 minutes from startup for the inverter frequency to go to full speed, but you'll see here the max is 46 at this time. It may increase or decrease and it might be limited by one of the protection modes. The operating current shown on the screen is the one that it's reading internally and it may not match your amp clamp, but it will be the one it's using to uh, control the compressor speed if the amps get too high. Uh, again, this is the one the computer is using. EV pulses will also appear on the screen. Remember from class 470, 480 pulses is for opening and mattering on the unit. Uh, we usually expect near 50%. Even up to 70% is considered normal. You'll see here it's pretty low, uh, probably down the 20 some percent, but the unit's just started up uh, and hasn't adjusted. So mattering on the equipment it will vary, but our indoor heat exchanger temp will vary from 42 to 47 and uh, in heating 108 to 116. Uh, before it starts to limit the compressor, uh, slow the frequency down and go into a protection mode. Uh, also, if they get too low or too high, we'll go into a safety mode and can shut the unit down. Some examples of no data appearing. Uh, don't panic. The uh, target discharge temp on some equipment will show 32 degrees until it figures out what it wants it to be. Or it'll come up blank. And you'll see on the right here, it's entirely blank for the entire indoor unit. It either doesn't see it or it's cycling through a timing uh, where every five seconds it's rechecking. Give it 10 seconds, see if the data comes up before you uh, rehook. All right, now we're on our screen. We're going to go ahead and uh, hit the little record button there, and we'll see it'll uh, ask for a yes to proceed. Uh, give us some warnings, uh, and it's going to tell us it's going to sample every five seconds and do a manual stop. And you'll see here we have a stop button on the bottom and the uh, recording light on top. If we want to finish, we'll ask, be asked yes or no, and we'll say yes. And then we can hit the home button and return to the main menu. Back at the main menu, we can hit the green arrow for play. And we'll go to that customer, which is the record only. In this case, we didn't set up a customer. Uh, if we had a customer set up, we would see a, a list of different customers. And we can play the different stuff on our phone as well. And we'll see a list of all the customers here. We're going to choose one. And in this case, we're just going to hit the check mark and tell it to proceed. Uh, and we did the check mark and proceed because we want to email it. We'll choose the email client. And you'll see it lasts for a two, and it'll uh, it'll attach the TGZ file uh, directly to the email, and you can send it. The person opening it is going to have to have the D checker uh, on the computer. The software could be loaded at no cost. Uh, it could be found at johnstonecaffergroup.com. It's just called the D checker three software, and it does work with the wired D checker as well as just importing. So in this case, we'll uh, go to the mobile app data import uh, and look for that file. It will bring up a screen for us. And we'll choose uh, the location of the TGZ file, which is our for email. We put it on a download file. We can open it up from that point. We can also decide not to send it. We can hit play and we can just choose the file instead of hitting the little edit button up top. And if we hit the file, we'll be able to play it. And we'll see it in the graph mode and we can move along the graph to change the timeline. And we can see all the sensors uh, as well as graph different items to see what's going on. If I can give you the best diagnostic use for this would be to, to monitor the uh, system after 20 minutes. You can look at the discharge temperature of the compressor and the target. And if it's unable to hit the target, there's a good reason, usually a refrigerant issue. Uh, if your gas is way too hot coming back, we're low in refrigerant. It's way too cold. We have too much. The best way to monitor operation. Between that and monitoring the indoor head temperature, again, cooling 42 to 47 on the exchanger and heating 108 to 116, uh, and that's considered proper operation. Uh, if you're 42 on the indoor coil and you have really good uh, discharge uh, temperature uh, meeting your target, uh, you just have to get that fan sped up, push some more heat in that coil if you want it to speed up. And on the heating mode, if everything looks good on that coil is 108 to 116 degrees, uh, it's not going to speed the compressor up until we push a little more coal or release a little more heat by speeding the fan up and pulling some heat off that evaporation coil, which would be the condenser during heat pump mode. All right, we're going to stay in our 10 minutes. That was a, a very quick walkthrough on connecting it and looking at your data. Uh, again, this will get you all the information you need to troubleshoot a piece of equipment. No different than hooking gauges up and sensors, uh, temperature monitors, uh, airflow meters to see what's going on with the system. This will give you all your data. 
Uh, hopefully it gets you in the right direction. Uh, again, if it gets you in a lab, we can hook it up to some equipment. Uh, if you have an opportunity to take the class, I sure look forward to seeing you. Uh, thank you for your time.